This is Raider News with Caleb Brady and Kelsey Ames with the news, Amber Simmons with Arts and Entertainment, and Trevor Skeens with sports. And now from Studio B at Scotch Plains Fanwood High School, Caleb Brady and Kelsey Ames. Hi, and welcome to the April edition of Raider News. I'm Caleb Brady. And I'm Kelsey Ames. The Student Government Association here at the high school recently hosted a Senior Citizens Day. Let's take a look at some of the footage. location with participant of this year's Senior Citizen Day, Caroline Perkins. So, Ms. Perkins, do you want to tell me a little bit about how your day's been going? Oh, my days are going fine. I look forward to these events. I think it's wonderful that the seniors are being recognized because they have made this town what it is today. So you keep doing that because we're very proud to be seniors, and we thank you very much for what you're doing. So what have you done so far today that's been fun for you? Oh, well, I... One, name that tune by Winning Sweet Caroline, because that's my favorite song, since my name is Caroline. <laughs> and I even knew who the, the singer was, Neil Diamond. I enjoyed the um, bingo. I haven't won yet, but one of the girls is playing for me. And it's just very nice to see a bunch of seniors getting together. We've all had cabin fever this winter. Well, thank you, Ms. Perkins, so much. You're very welcome. Back to the studio. The SPFHS DECA chapter recently participated in states competitions in Sherry Hill, New Jersey. Let's go on location with Elijah Fields to find out more. Hey, I'm here with Sarah and Maddie. So how was states for um, DECA this year? Uh, states were really great. We had a lot of people qualify for nationals and it was a good competition. We had a lot of fun. And where's nationals this year? It's in Atlanta, Georgia in May. Members of the Scotch Plains Bandit Italian program recently hosted some Italian students. Let's go on location to find out more. Hi, I'm on location with Mary and Domenico, two people participating in our Italian exchange program. So Mary, tell me a little bit about the program this year. So basically we're having um, students from a place in Italy called Calabria uh, come to here in Scotch Plains and they stay at a person's house for 16 days. Um, ti piace America? Yes, uh, I like America. It's uh, very beautiful. <laughs> ti piace New York? Uh, yes, um, uh, I saw yesterday tomorrow, uh, New York, and uh, it's very beautiful. <laughs> so is this your first time doing the exchange? Yes, it's my first time doing the exchange, and it's his as well. And um, we're getting along really nicely, so it's great. <laughs> well, thank you, both of you. All right, now back to the studio. According to a recent article in the Star-Ledger by Kimberly Heffling of the Associative Press, a high school-friendly SAT test will be in place for 2016. The current SAT college entrance exam is undergoing sweeping revisions. College board officials state that the revised exam will re be representative of what is taught in high school and what is expected in college. The new exam will be rolled out in 2016, so this year's ninth graders will be taking it in their junior year of high school. One of the biggest changes is the SAT's elimination of the penalty for guessing an answer. Vocabulary will also be updated to more reflect what students have learned. The essay portion of the test will become optional. The SAT scores play only a small role in the admission process. Students' grades and their extracurricular activities will also be important. This year, the SPF chapter of Junior States of America attended their annual trip in Washington, D.C. Students participated in a Model Congress-style debate and passed a bill to incentivize STEM education. Senior Alex Favreau took home a gavel, and Eric Tannenbaum and myself each took home two. The delegation will attend Spring State in the coming weeks and hopes to continue their success there. Health Day News states that teens who have tried electronic cigarettes are more likely to use regular cigarettes. We are seeing the use of e-cigarettes among adolescents rapidly increasing, and it doesn't seem like they're using the products to successfully quit smoking. The study shows that e-cigarettes seem to be making inroads with young people. This is concerning because people who become addicted to nicotine are often very young. 90% of people who catch this addictive disease are 18 years old or younger. Let's go to this month's construction update. I'm Kevin Kirby for this month's edition of Construction Update. I'm here in Studio A where we have re relocated the archives of Raider News dating back to 1985. 
Here, as you can see, is the entire 29-year library of Raider news on these shelves. From 2004 to the present, we shifted from VHS tapes to DVDs. We are in Studio A with the relocation of the Look at the Past station. Here we can uh, put in four VHS tapes and uh, look at all four TVs and decide which Look at the Past we're going to use. Now into Arts and Entertainment with Amber Simmons. Thanks, Kayla. What's happening in April? On Thursday, April 3rd, the Barcelona Spanish Exchange Breakfast will be held in the second floor of the Media Center. On Wednesday, April 9th, District Choral Night will be held in the auditorium from 7.30 to 10.30. The Barcelona Farewell Dinner will take place in the cafeteria on Friday, April 11th. And on Monday, April 28th, the College Financial Seminar will be held in the auditorium from 7 to 9.30. Now let's see some highlights from the Repertory Theater production, How to Succeed in Business Without Really Trying. Could you tell me where the personnel office is? Personnel? It's right there. Thank you. You, you're not discouraged? Of course not. I'm prepared for exactly this sort of thing. Mr. Finch will be starting out in the mail room. Glad you don't mind that, Finch. Sir, in a big pond like this, everyone must begin as a little fish. Even a barracuda. Mr. Finch, a man like you doesn't have to worry about someone like him. Smitty, you're going to get Mr. Finch particulars. Ah, yes, particulars. Now, Mr. Finch, the first question. Have you got a girl? A girl? No. Good. I mean, that's the right answer. I mean, it's very wise not to have a girl. Wearing the white blue uniform while he goes onward. Pardon me, ma'am. You should be wearing this. It goes with your hair. Yeah, man. You just want me to have this flower? You don't know who I am? Well, that doesn't matter. What matters is that the flowers seem to cry out to be worn by you. Yeah, man. I'm Miss Jones, Mr. Bigley's secretary. No. You can't be. I mean, that is. You just can't be. Why not? Well, from Bud Frum's description of you, I've never... I mean, you're not a frightening person. Thank you. Your brain is a company brain. The company's washing and now I can't complain. The company magazine, boy, what style, what punch. The company restaurant, every day, same lunch. I'm always available. You sure are wonderful, Rosemary. One of these days, I hope I can show you my appreciation and... Lunch. What? I said lunch. What about lunch? I'd love to! Now she's thinking Suppose I take his arm And he's thinking Well really, what's the harm? Then she says Hungry? And he says Yeah! Yeah? Now let's take a look at April's Faculty Member of the Month, Mr. Raymond Moscow. Mr. Moscow, who is a TV, arts, and production teacher here at the high school, as well as the stage crew director. So, what is your involvement with the stage crew like? Um, it's, it's really good. It's a lot of time. Um, I've been doing it for three years so far, so this is my third year going into it. And, uh, yeah, we come in every Saturday. We uh, help wire the show for sound and lights, help, um, help 
the parent volunteers with the set building and stuff like that. And then we have a crew of about 25 people who help out with the play. Um, we have about 10 people actually moving the set pieces around. A couple people backstage changing microphones. A couple people like working the soundboard. A couple people working the lighting board and on spotlights. There's a there's a lot of stuff going on that uh, makes it go. I tell I told everybody in the play uh, for stage crew that um, the the actors on stage are the um, are the caramelized apples in the apple pie, and they're the dough that holds it all together. Like the caramelized a- apples, they're still going to be tasty if you eat them like there. But with the dough there. It, it, it puts it all together and it makes it a, a tasty dessert treat. Exactly. So how does it feel to be taking over for Mr. Hooper as far as producing Raider News and Raider News Update? Um, you know, it's a it's going to be a big undertaking, but uh, I'm ready for it. Um, we've been working together this whole year and he's been, um, I've been kind of like, you know, looking over his shoulder and kind of like seeing how everything goes and what to expect uh, when I do take over the show, you know, it's, it's the longest running newscast in the nation. So it's like, you know, it's a big deal. It's an honor to, to, to be doing it. But uh, hopefully it's in good hands under my control. Great. So I also heard you ha- got an EEF grant. So can you tell me a little bit more about what that is? Yeah, it's a new, um, it's a new uh, grant. Uh, the en- Education Enrichment Foundation, every year they, um, they fundraise money and they allow all the teachers in the district to apply for these grants. They want to um, pilot new programs in the school that we, we didn't have anymore at, yet, and I saw a need for podcasting. We have stuff for um, we have stuff for TV. We have like yearbook, which does like magazine style ph- photography and stuff like that. We have the Fan Scotian that does newspaper stuff, but we don't have anything really for radio. Mm-hmm. So I, I went online. I did some research. I got stuff that you would need for a podcasting studio. And, um, yeah, so hopefully um, I can implement it into some of my classes and maybe start an after-school club uh, with that involved. And I, I, I see it growing into something that the school can really be proud of. Awesome. Great. Thank you so much for your time, and thanks for all the work around the high school. Thanks. Now back to the studio. Now let's take a look at this month's Student of the Month. Hi, I'm on location with Alec Rodriguez. He is this month's student of the month. So Alec, how does it feel to be student of the month? It feels really good. You know, I just walked out of calculus and everybody was clapping and everything. So it was really nice. So I heard you got accepted to Yale. Can you please explain a little bit about that? Well, actually, I received a call maybe like about a month ago from the admissions office. And they came and they said that they were going to offer me like a likely letter, which is like kind of like it's almost guaranteeing admission but not exactly but it's basically that they send it to like you know only a couple hundred people who they think are really like qualified to go to school and they're going to likely offer me admission in late March. So are you a part of any after school activity? Yeah I'm actually the president of the Spanish Honor Society so right now we're like working out with El Centro and we're helping out with the ESL classes that they teach there so we're trying to get all the members involved. Thank you Alec now back to the studio. Now let's take a look at this month's featured artist, John Dawson. Hi, I'm Danielle and I'm here with John Dawson for Featured Artist of the Month. So, John, can you tell me a little bit about your experience and the role you played in Rep Theater? I was the main character in this uh, past musical we did, uh, How to Succeed in Business Without Really Trying. I was J. Pierpont Finch. And um, overall, I'd say it was a a wonderful experience. It was one of my favorite shows to do this year. I don't plan on doing musicals like this but I do want to go on to vocal performance and do more opera type uh, performance things. Not exactly this musical comedy kind of stuff, but a little more dramatic. Do you have any idols or someone you look up to for music? That's a big one would be my private teacher, Curtis. He's a, uh, I've been taking lessons with him since the end of my freshman year. And uh, he's really helped me a lot with uh, growing as a musician and a singer. All right, so last question. Um, Is there anyone that inspired you to start singing or do opera or do the musical, for instance? As far as uh, musicals have gone, I wasn't actually going to audition my freshman year, but I was tricked into it by my (laughs) choir director and uh, me and my friend, Ross, who was uh, my Mr. Wally Womper in the show. For those of you who have seen it, we were both tricked in our freshman year and we stuck with it ever since. So thanks, Mrs. Allen. (laughs) All right, thank you, that was amazing. Here's Music Critics with Maddie and Jenny. Hello, Scott Springs Fairwood High School, and welcome to this month's Music Critics. In just a few short years, Katy Perry has risen to the top of the charts with five number one hit singles. 
In a few short months, she'll be coming to the New York metro area for her 2014 Prismatic World Tour. This album features 13 songs, Unconditionally, Roar, Dark Horse, featuring Juicy J. That's one of our favorite songs. Of course. Um, this was her first album since the breakup with Russell Brand, so a lot of songs probably reflect that breakup. It also conveys her usual girl power message. Yes. Make sure you support her tour and her album as well. Yes, now yes. back to the studio. Now let's join Matt McGowan and Elijah Fields as they introduce this month's viral video. Hi, this is Matt McGowan and Elijah Fields. We're back with viral videos. So this month we're doing a Pepsi Jeff Gordon prank, and I, I really enjoyed it. It was long. Uh, there were a lot of good laughs in it and good times. Uh, he was worried because the police were going to pull him over, and it's just so many good times in this pr in this video. What do you think, Elijah? I enjoyed it. I thought the funny part was the police car chasing the taxi and the guy in the back seat screaming like a little girl. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, it was really funny. All right, and now let's check this video out. You Travis? I'm Travis. Did you buckle that seatbelt for oh, me? Oh, yeah, sure. You know, I went away for 10 years, so you can imagine the fear I get. Oh, what? I wasn't even doing anything. I'll get out of the cab. We can put the windows down. I can't put my my windows locked. No, sir. Please. I can't sir. go back, man. I sir. can't go. Sir, stop. sorry, I can't. Stop. Stop. I can't stop. Please stop. I can't Please do stop. it, man. Please. No. 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 Now back to the studio. Now let's take a look at spring fashions with Mallory Cunningham and Jody Cornwell. I'm Mallory Cunningham. And I'm Jody Cornwell. Welcome to this month's edition of Fashion Fads. Spring Fashions. Court is wearing black leggings, a beige top, and brown boots, and Riley's wearing jeans, Jordans, and a Nike shirt. Next we have Deja and Anthony. Anthony's wearing a neon Nike sweatshirt and running shoes, and Deja's wearing leggings, a sweatshirt, and Uggs. Jess is wearing black leggings, black boots, and a scarf, and Vinny's wearing an Under Armour sweatshirt, jeans, and Sperry's. And finally, we have Tony and Michaela. Tony's wearing headphones, a vest, sweatpants, and sneakers, and Michaela's wearing a beanie, a scarf, a sweater, and Uggs. Thanks for watching. Now back to the studio. Now let's go to sports with Patrick Hinkles, filling in for Trevor Gaines. Thank you, Kelsey. The boys lacrosse team looks to improve on last season's success. Miles Hunter caught up with a member of the team. Hi, I'm on location with Brian Heath of the boys varsity lacrosse. So, what can you tell me about your current preseason operations? Basically, tell me um, how has the weather influenced your overall practice timing? Um, like it hasn't really been that big of a deal. We practiced. We had tryouts inside like one day. I think we had one inside practice, but we usually just tough it out. Like if it's a little rain, a little snow, it's not that big of a deal. Like we could always just play through it. Okay. So have you guys had any recent scrimmages? Um, we scrimmaged Caldwell and Wachong Hills the other day. We uh, beat Caldwell, like I think it was like 9-3, to three, and then lost to Wachong Hills by one, but it was a solid game. They're like top 30 in the state, so. Okay. Yeah, and we played well against them too, so. Okay. And overall, how do you think the team is going to do this year? Um, this year is looking really great, actually. Like last year, we uh, won our first state game. We made it to like 
sectional semis, but uh, I think this year is looking even better, honestly. A lot of the kids are bigger, stronger. We got some solid freshmen coming up, so it's going to be a good year. Okay. Well, thanks, Brian, and good luck with the cross. The girls' lacrosse team had a 7-12 and record last year. The squad will look to have a .500 win-loss record this season. Let's go on location with one of the players. I'm Jody Cornell on location with a member of the girls' varsity lacrosse team, Laura Russell. Sora, have you had any scrimmages so far? Yeah, we've had four so far. And how did you do? Um, as a team, we did great. We, our chemistry is just phenomenal compared to last year, and I think we're going to have a really good season. So what are some of your goals for the season? Um, we definitely want to score, score more goals, obviously. Um, we want to win more games, and we just want to, like, the tr transition in the midfield. We want to get better at that, and we want to win as many draws as we can. And are there any star players you see for the season? Um, Andrew McNeely, as she's a senior, and she has such a great shot. She's always like cutting to the net and scoring goals. Um, Julie Frias, as a sophomore, second year varsity, she is has like her shot is so fast. And um, Becky Mahorder, she's first year varsity, and so far like her defensive skills like are insane. So I think that would be really good for the team. All right, awesome. Good luck. Now back to the studio. The SPF baseball team is looking forward to this season. The team is looking to replicate their great start from last season when the team won their first six games. Let's go on location with Elijah Fields. Hey, I'm here with Matt Ridge, varsity baseball player. Um, how's your practice going so far? Um, our practices are going pretty well. Um, everybody's working hard and giving what they can. What's your goal for this season? Goal for this season, I would have to say, is going to be a county title. Now back to the studio. Now let's go on location for the softball team. Hi, I'm with Kelly Yeager, a member of the softball team. So, how's preseason going so far? It's actually really good. We have two new assistant coaches who have definitely helped shape us already, and it's only been like two weeks in. We're doing a lot better than we have any previous year. That's awesome. That's good news. So what are your expectations for this season? To get more than six wins. <laughs> Last year, we had a struggling season, and we had only six wins. So this year, we want to at least double that. Okay. So what are your personal goals? Uh, how many hits, how many home runs, how many stolen bases? Well, I kind of want to be, instead of just shooting for a like triple, I want to be a base hit hitter. So I want to be able to get on base almost every single time and just advance the team that way. Okay. And now, since you're a senior, this is your last season playing Raiders softball. How do you feel knowing that this is your last chance to make an impact on the program? It's really scary, actually, like to know that, like, after all four years, this is it. Like, I want to do as much as I can in as short of amount of time. I want to definitely impact the team now so that for future years, they'll be just as excited as I am to play this year. That's awesome. All right. Thank you and good luck. Now back to the studio. The golf team last year won sectionals and will look to win the tournament again and more. A member of Raider News caught up with one of the golf players to discuss their upcoming season. Hi, I'm on location with Jeremy Haas. So Jeremy, how has the uh, golf team been doing so far? Uh, so far, we've just had a couple practices, uh, just like 30 minute practices in the gym, just hitting foam golf balls into the divider. We're hitting the ball well for inside. It's just as much as we can do with all the snow. Good. Um, with all the talent that you've seen, how ready do you think the team is for uh, competitions with other schools? Um, we're pretty ready. Everyone's hitting the ball well for what we've been able to do. Uh, everyone's at the top of their game. I think this year we'll be able to compete like with some of the top teams in the state. Okay. And um, who do you think is the most talented and that's going to be uh, really helping the team along this year? Uh, this year it's going to be John Pack. He's a freshman. He's one of the best in the nation for his age. and. He's going to be the best on the team this year, so hopefully he'll help lead us to a state title. All right, thank you. Hopefully we'll uh, go far this uh, golf season. Now back to the studio. Spring track is right around the corner. The team is looking to win many medals this season, as well as placing for events. Let's go on location to find out more. Hello, I'm Kay Rember here with Quincy Sanchez, a part of the track and field team. So, Quincy, how is the track doing this year? Um, the track team's looking... Uh pretty good this year. It's going pretty well. The coaches are training us to the best of their ability. Um, it's going to be a, like a really tough two weeks right now, and my legs are still really sore, but it's all for the better of the season. Yeah, that's very good. So how's the field team going this year? Field team's looking very good. Our throwers are, well, we lost a lot of seniors last year, and then we just replenished with some great throwers and Pierce Johnson, Mike Drumfor, and uh, 
Rashad Gary. So I'm looking forward to those three coming in and like making a big impact on the county. And uh, we have a freshman um, or a sophomore, Alex. He's um, hopefully he'll do good too. And as for the uh, jumps, uh, we have a quarry as our cornerstone for a long jump, high jump, and triple jump. So um, I'm looking for, forward to him leading us into uh, winning another conference title. And um, we just just want to get another three-peat sweep in the conference jumps again. Wow, that field team looks stacked. So um, you're saying your potential is very wealthy. So how do you feel about that? Our potential is very high. We could we could do really good this year. I'm looking forward to great things, um, and hopefully, our goal this year is to come to place um, high highly in the uh, county relays and the county championship. I honestly think that we could do it as a team. It just starts from day one and like week one, week two. It's like take it at like time after time, just to get better at what we're doing, and so hopefully we'll get better with that. All right. Back to studio. The boys tennis team is looking to excel this year. A member of Rare News caught up with one of the players to discuss the team's goal for this season. I'm senior Josh Lopez. I'm tri-captain of the tennis team this year. Cool, cool. So uh, how's the team looking so far? We're looking pretty good. I mean, uh, we graduated four out of seven of our starters from last year, so that was kind of a bummer. We did well last year, but uh, <clears throat> we're hopeful for this year. We've got a couple good freshmen coming up. And um, we still have our first singles, Jeffy Rogers. He's just lights out. Um, so we're pretty hopeful for this year. We're working hard. Sounds promising. Have you guys uh, played anybody yet? Yesterday we had our first scrimmage. We played Colonia, and we shut them out 5-0. So we won all five of our matches. It was a pretty good display of how we're looking this year, and we did well. That's pretty awesome, and we're all here rooting for you. Good luck. Thank you. Now let's take a look at April's Male Athlete of the Month. I'm Bianca Di Maria on location with the Athlete of the Month, Christian Zazali. So what sports do you play? I play baseball and soccer. And for baseball for the spring, what are your goals for the team? Our team goals include winning a county championship, winning a conference champi championship, and hopefully a sectional championship. And have you had any scrimmages so far? We had a scrimmage yesterday, and we played Morristown, and we tied 3-3. Three to three. And since you're a senior, where do you plan on going to college? I'll be attending Tufts University in Boston to play baseball. All right, thank you. Now back to the studio. Now let's take a look at April's Female Athlete of the Month. I'm Cameron Smith here with the Female Athlete of the Month, Julie Hagen, who is a lacrosse player. So, Julie, how's the beginning of the season been for you so far? It's been pretty good. We've had four scrimmages so far. Um, the team is pretty young, but uh, we're excited to get the season on, on its way and it uh, should be a good season, so we're excited. Nice. What position do you play? I play center uh, attack. So I do the draw at the beginning of the game, but I don't usually play defense. I'm uh, more of an offensive player. So. OK, when's your first game? Our first game is this Wednesday versus New Prov home. Um, we lost them in overtime last year by one point. So we're definitely excited to face them and uh, see what happens. Good luck. And um, do you plan on playing lacrosse in college? Yes, I'm going to play uh, D3 lacrosse next year in college at Eastern University. So um, it won't be too serious, but it'll definitely be a fun experience to still continue to play. So I'm excited. Thanks, Julia. And uh, back to the studio. That wraps it up for sports. Now back to Kayla and Kelsey. That wraps it up for the April edition of Raider News. Have a happy Easter. Enjoy what remains of spring break.